J. William Fulbright was from Fayetteville, Arkansas, and had not seen a building with more than four stories or a large body of water uh, before he went to Oxford. The point about Fayetteville is, is that we're all from Fayetteville. Yeah. Uh, uh, and we, we learn just as much by leaving our personal Fayettevilles, uh, regardless of where they are and where we come from. As Helmut Qualtinger once pointed out, St. Pöten is über euch. <laughs> so the program is, uh, is about leaving those places and, and coming back. And it's about taking uh, what we learn about being citizens, not only of our home countries, but of the world. My life would be totally different. Probably my personality would be totally different if I had been with Fulbright not on this way. Die Studenten haben, uns, also, haben das gar nicht glauben können, dass man ansuchen kann, um ein Stipendium um ein Jahr an einer amerikanischen Universität zu studieren. Das Amerika hat mein ganzes Leben beeinflusst. Das sind einfach prägende Jahre, das Senat hat das ja so auch gesehen. You have to get them while they are young. Das ist bei mir auch gelungen. Diese Gesellschaft, diese Grundstimmung, das müsste man doch auch einmal in Österreich schaffen können. Ich glaube, das mehr als irgendetwas anderes hat mein Leben beeindruckt und verändert. Das war die einzige Möglichkeit, irgendwo hinzukommen. Und das, was den Studenten so ungeheuer imponiert hat, war die Freiheit in Amerika. Wir sind praktisch vom Nichts, im, vom Nachkriegs äh, Österreich äh, ins für mich Schlaraffenland gefahren. Es war der Versuch, sicherlich ein Abenteuer zu bestehen. It's an amazing, amazing opportunity uh, to be able to work here for so long. Insgesamt hat das Ganze meinen Horizont unheimlich erweitert. Just to be able to walk on the same streets as the composers that I'm singing is absolutely incredible experience. My Fulbright Award uh, opened unbelievable doors. Es war tatsächlich die Grundlage für meine gesamte berufliche Karriere. Neben dem Marshallplan, einer der tollsten, aus meiner Sicht, einer der tollsten Leistungen der amerikanischen Außenpolitik nach dem Zweiten Weltkrieg war. Also das war eine der, der, der großartigsten Investitionen, die Amerika je gemacht hat. James William Fulbright was born in 1905 as the fourth of six children raised by J. William and Roberta Fulbright in Fayetteville, Arkansas. His father was a farmer turned real estate investor and successful entrepreneur. Consequently, Bill Fulbright grew up in one of the wealthiest and most influential families of Fayetteville. He studied history at the University of Arkansas, where he was president of the student body and a football star, and graduated in 1924. His leadership profile, athletic ability, and family social standing made him an attractive candidate for a Rhodes Scholarship. Starting in fall 1925, he studied political science and history at Oxford University for three years, an experience that transformed his worldview. In summer 1928, Fulbright settled in Vienna for six months, where he spent an increasing amount of time at the Café Louvre, a coffee house and hangout of American journalists and European correspondents. These Viennese contacts and travel in Central and Southeastern Europe provided him with what his biographer Randall Woods has called his introduction to the real world of international politics. Fulbright returned to the United States in 1929, moved to Washington, D.C., married, studied law, worked in and out of government, and then returned to Arkansas to manage family businesses and lecture at the University of Arkansas Law School. In 1939, at the age of 34, he was named president of the University of Arkansas, an appointment that testified to the political clout of his family and ultimately began his career in politics. In 1942, he ran successfully for the House of Representatives and was off to Washington, where he gained national attention in 1943 by authoring the so-called Fulbright Resolution, favoring the participation of the United States in what was to become the United Nations. In 1944, he ran successfully for the U.S. Senate, where he was to distinguish himself as the longest-serving chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee. Fulbright immediately recognized the implications of the advent of the nuclear age for international politics. Eight weeks after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Fulbright announced his intention to introduce a bill to promote goodwill through the exchange of students. The Fulbright Act was based on a simple but ingenious idea, amending a piece of legislation that had nothing to do with educational exchange 
the Surplus Property Act of 1944. President Truman signed Fulbright's amendment into law on August 1st, 1946. After World War II, the U.S. government had mountains of wartime material stockpiled overseas. Food, medicine, fuel, vehicles, equipment. First of all, the Fulbright Act allowed the U.S. government to accept foreign currencies, such as Austrian shillings, to liquidate these surplus assets. Second, it proposed that the United States conclude executive agreements with foreign governments establishing binational commissions conceived to jointly decide on how to use these substantial monies, thus making foreign governments equal partners in the Fulbright program. Third, it earmarked funds for bilateral exchanges. A, for financing studies, research, instruction, and other educational activities of or for American citizens in schools and institutions of higher learning abroad. And B, for furnishing transportation for citizens of such foreign countries who desire to attend American schools and institutions of higher learning. The Fulbright Act established the original structure of the program travel and maintenance grants for American students and scholars coming to Austria, and travel grants for Austrian students and scholars going to the United States. Finally, the Fulbright Act authorized the President to establish an independent board of foreign scholarships to oversee the exchange program that was to bear the Senator's name. The U.S. Educational Commission held its first meeting in Vienna on October 6, 1950 to plan exchanges for the 51-52 academic year with an operative budget equivalent to $250,000. This phenomenal amount of money at the time, 6.5 million Austrian shillings, allowed a small country to initiate a large exchange program that brought 64 American Fulbrighters to Austria and sent 140 Austrian Fulbrighters to the United States in its first year. Es ist eine Kommission aus ähm, zehn Mitgliedern bestehend, je fünf Mitglieder von der US-amerikanischen und österreichischen Seite. Es ist immer eine binationale Entscheidungsfindung. Aufgabe der Kommission ist es, ähm, die Programmleitlinien festzulegen, äh, dafür Sorge zu tragen, dass die Auswahlkommissionen für US-amerikanische und österreichische Studierende und Forschende eingerichtet werden und äh, professionell abgewickelt werden. Ja, naja, also ich habe nach bestem Wissen und Gewissen mit meiner Amerika-Erfahrung, die ja schon als Kriegsgefangener begann, äh, habe ich mich bemüht, äh, diese hehren Ziele zu erreichen. Im Sinn der Verständigung der beiden Länder waren, war natürlich die Betreuung, besonders der amerikanischen Studenten, war meine Aufgabe. Mhm. Es war natürlich manchmal ein bisschen schwierig, denn Wien oder Österreich überhaupt war ja noch, zeigte noch Spuren des Krieges. Ja, also am Anfang war, die, war es notwendig, die Amerikaner, die nach Österreich gekommen sind, umfassend zu betreuen, von Wohnungssuche angefangen über Aufklärung, dass, sie, dass wir zivilisatorisch noch nicht so weit sind nach dem Krieg. Ich machte mit amerikanischen Studenten Ausflüge in das russische Gebiet und das sollte man nicht ohne ausdrückliche Erlaubnis machen. Ich kann mich erinnern, ich machte zum Beispiel einen Ausflug zu Burg Kreuzenstein und da fuhr auf einmal ein russischer Jeep vor und ein russischer Offizier stieg aus und die Studenten waren, die ich mit mir waren, die Amerikanischen, die, die wurden also sehr nervös. Aber dann schätze, der ging zur Theke und bestellte Wein. My project is, is interviews with women who are here in Vienna in the aftermath of World War II. Particularly in the United States, people don't tend to think a lot about what was going on after World War II. It was sort of like, and then everybody came home and the story was over. But the more I talked to Austrians, especially women, the more I realized that for a lot of people, that's where the story really started. That there was so much chaos and turmoil and the need to sort of reformulate your life on a personal level, in addition to having to deal with just all of the needs of everyday life in a destroyed city. Yeah, my build here vom Ankunft der amerikanischen Stipendiaten ja. am Wiener Westbahnhof. Ja, ja. Wie er damals aussah. Sind Sie das? Wäre Ihr Bild irgendwo? 
Ich glaube, das bin ich da in, in, mit, mit, dem, mit der Tracht. Also Koffer tragen gehörte zu den Aufgaben des Generalsekretärs damals ja. wie heute. Ich habe es gern gemacht. Ja. Actually, very frightening. Um, it was not. Most of the houses were not renovated. It was very gray. The heating systems were old-fashioned. Uh, taking our first trip to the Hungarian border, seeing the Iron Curtain, seeing uh, soldiers in their outposts with uh, machine guns, it was frightening, absolutely frightening. Very melancholic city, very old city. You know, I just remember all these old people on the streets. And in Onaivikom, and it's a bright city, it's a luminous city, it's full of young people and you know, probably the best metaphor to illustrate the change is just getting, leaving the airport. You know, the first signs that you see say, Bratislava this way, Prague this way, Bruno that way, Slovenia that way. And I think after 1989, you know, Vienna has not only become a center again, but it has become a magnet for young people from all of these um, surrounding countries. The Fulbright Stipendium nach dem Zweiten Weltkrieg ähm, waren wissenschaftspolitisch eine neue Type. Zum ersten Mal eine demokratisierte Type. Es war für alle möglich, einen Zugang zu dem Vollbeitstipendium zu bekommen. Und für alle heißt möglich, die sich beworben haben und die von der Kommission durch ein Interview ausgewählt wurden, nach Qualitätsmerkmal. Ja. Until the mid-60s, Fulbright travel grants for Austrian students were managed parallel to the placement of Austrian students at American colleges and universities, a task handled by the Exchange Activities Branch of the U.S. Embassy in Vienna, which, in turn, worked hand-in-hand -hand with the Institute of International Education in New York City. The Institute placed Austrian students at colleges and universities all over the United States, negotiated the all-important tuition waivers for them, and solicited the support of American civil society, clubs, associations, fraternities, sororities, and foundations to subsidize their living costs, too. The travel grants were worth a small fortune, and American institutions and organizations effectively covered almost all the other costs associated with being a Fulbrighter in the good old days costs have changed dramatically since then. Ich habe ohne 